Welcome to Elevate. My name is Pastor Tony Legamba, and I'm privileged to serve on the staff here at Church of the King. Now, we're so honored that you guys have joined us for the next six weeks, and we are going to have a great time together. You see, at Church of the King, we put a high priority on prayer because we believe it's such a critical component of having a relationship with Jesus Christ. It is really one of the primary ways we get to know who God really is. Now, together, we're going to spend the next six weeks learning, growing, and implementing some of the most essential parts of what prayer really is all about. The objective of our, of our time together is just simply to be able to equip or to resource you with tools essential to walk with your, your, in your relationship with Jesus Christ. Some of the topics we're going to cover are simply things like, why do we pray? How can we pray? Are there different ways to approach who God really is? You see, it is our desire that each of us gain a greater appreciation of and a fresh perspective of the privilege of prayer. So let's get started. I think we would all agree that there are many concepts, many ideas out there about this subject of prayer, lots of opinions. Some people would say that prayer is simply reflective meditation. In other words, it's a spiritual exercise where we kind of dump everything out of our brain and just kind of focus in on something really ethereal. Some people would say that prayer is just simply fulfilling an obligation, a religious obligation. It's something that you just do because you want to be good. Some would say it's, it's recitation over written prayer. In other words, it's reading something that's prescribed for you, and that's how you communicate with God. Well, still others would treat prayer perhaps as a recipe for success. In other words, it's kind of like a good luck charm. You just kind of do it and hoping that that's going to help you in your life and to live it a little bit more favorably. So today what we're going to do is we're going to clarify this whole concept of what prayer is by discovering what the Bible says about prayer, especially in three areas. Number one, we're going to talk about what prayer is. Secondly, we're going to talk about what prayer requires. And thirdly, we're going to talk about probably the greatest person who understood prayer. And of course, that is the person of Jesus Christ. So I'm going to ask everybody in the small group right now to open up to session one that's entitled, What is Prayer? So if you're taking notes, number one, prayer is simply talking to God for the purpose of getting to know him. Now, when we talk about this issue of having a conversation or talking, it infers that there are two parts of this. Talking to God simply means that we speak to him, but also having a discussion means that we're also listening for him. I want you to think about this for a moment. Every person that you know came into your life because you either spent time with them or you communicated something with them. In other words, all the relationships that you and I have in our lives have been developed simply through communication. About 40 years ago, I spotted a lady across the room. She happens to be my wife today. Her name was Renee. And so when Renee and I kind of connected eyes, we began jotting down notes to each other which then graduated into conversations over the telephone, which then graduated into deeper heart-level dialogue to today, 36 years later, we now can basically finish each other's sentences. Now, what's interesting, I think, about that is that all of us understand that relationships really advance through communication with one another. Same, it's the same way with prayer. Prayer is communicating our hearts, our ambitions, our desires, our needs, our fears, our emotions to a God who loves us and has an unbelievable plan for our lives and also who knows us very well. You see, prayer really begins with the consideration of who it is that we're praying to. So prayer is talking to God, but have you ever thought to yourself, who am I really addressing when I'm praying? You see, it is it's becoming acutely aware of the audience that we have. Now, the reason I believe that some people struggle with prayer is not because they have a lack of desire or a lack of, of really getting to know who God is. I think they really struggle in one area, and it's having a lack of understanding, number one, of how do you do this thing called prayer, and number two, of who God really is. So let me just take a moment to talk about what does the scripture say about who it is that we're addressing when we pray? 
Well, number one, the Bible says that God knows everything. It's the theological term that means omniscience, which simply means God knows everything about our past, our present, and our future. Listen to Psalm 139, verses one and two. The scripture says, oh Lord, you have searched me and you know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You understand my thoughts from afar. So as we're praying, we need to understand that God knows everything about us when we're talking with him. Secondly, the Bible declares that God is always present. It's being, he is omnipresent, which means that we are never alone. He is always with us. Psalm 139 verses seven and eight say it this way. Where can I go from your presence? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. Or if I make my bed in Sheol, which is the place of the grave, you are even there. There is nowhere, in other words, we can escape the presence of God. So I want you to think about the God that you're praying to. Number one, he knows everything about you. Number two, he is always there to converse with you. But number three, the Bible declares that he is a God who could handle anything, which is the word omnipotent. He is the God who has all power. Matthew chapter 19, verse 26 says this, with people, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. So today, what we're talking about is prayer is having a conversation with a God who knows everything about us, with a God who is always present, and with a God who's able to handle anything that comes across our path. Now, let me share the second thought with you today about this whole idea of prayer. Prayer requires faith. First of all, prayer requires faith because the God to whom we pray is invisible. Listen to Colossians 1, verse 15. The Bible says Jesus is the image of the invisible God. So when you and I are praying to God, we all recognize that we cannot see God with the naked eye. So our faith has to tell us that God exists, that he is there. Secondly, faith requires, or prayer rather, requires faith because we understand that God is transcendent, which means that he is positionally high above everything else. Isaiah chapter 55, verses eight and nine say it this way. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. As high as the heaven is above the earth, so are his thoughts above ours. Faith, or prayer rather, requires faith to mean simply that God exists, and secondly, that God is good and can handle anything we can go through. So then prayer at the most basic level is having a conversation with God that involves or demands some level of faith. So if prayer is having a conversation with God, the last thing we wanna talk about is what does that really look like? Well, just as there are different kinds of conversations with people, there are different kinds of prayer. You see, sometimes we approach God in, in a personal relationship with him, understanding that God is our father and we are his child. Sometimes we approach God, we have a personal need. So we approach God on the basis of him being our provider. Or thirdly, sometimes we approach God on behalf of praying for other people to appeal for God's care for those to whom we are praying for. You see, prayer can be expressed in so many different ways. In other words, it can take so many different forms. Sometimes prayer can be seen in terms of worship, where we sing to God, desperation, where we cry out to God, intercession, where we pray for others, repentance, where we turn away from sin, gratitude, where we are grateful for what God has done, declaration, where we proclaim the truth of God's word over our situation. Petition, where we are in need of God's provision. And sometimes we come to God in submission where we surrender our lives to the Lord. And let me give you the third and final thought. So we've talked about what prayer is, that it requires faith. We talked about what prayer looks like. And thirdly, we wanna talk about the greatest model of prayer that there ever was. Of course, it's Jesus. Jesus sets the standard regarding a life dedicated to prayer. Romans chapter eight, verse 34 says this. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father and intercedes for us. In other words, not only did Jesus pray through his life and ministry here on earth, but Jesus continues to pray for you and I today. Jesus' life is saturated with prayer. Think about it. Jesus prayed prior to his temptation. He prayed for physical needs. 
He prayed during impossible situations. He prayed for his father's will. He prayed when he was alone. He prayed when he was in the city. He prayed for his friends. He prayed where there was despair. You see, Jesus prayed about everything because he desired to walk in the will of God and to tap into the heart of God. And let me just encourage you as we close our time together today. There is no request too big. There is no need too insignificant. And there is no issue too difficult for God. There's nothing beyond God's ability. You see, he desires to spend time with you and I in prayer. And therefore, I believe prayer is the greatest privilege afforded to the human race where we can connect with God, with the God who created us, and with the God who loves us. Now, as we wrap up session one, allow me to challenge every one of you in the group, and I want you to hear me. I'm going to encourage all of you to take these next six weeks to bring your biggest prayer needs, to bring your greatest challenges, and your deepest secrets to a God who awaits to commune with you. Remember, God loves you beyond your capacity to comprehend and nothing exists beyond his ability to deal with it. Thank you guys for joining us for session one of Elevate and enjoy your discussion with your small group and we'll see you guys next week.